Good afternoon. It is a work day, and we have a project on our desk. This is a royal parade that somebody sent me. They purchased it through eBay, and it needs a paint job and a clean, and that's what it's going to get. It's pretty sticky. It's got some goo in there, but for the most part, it types, and that's all you can really, really ask for. So I'm going to put you in the stand, and we're going to get started. We're going to take apart the royal parade. This is a script machine, and they frequently come in script. You just look for the, the one on these ones. But we'll go ahead and we'll do a full teardown of the Royal Parade because they're common. Oops, I already dropped something on the floor. First thing you do is take off the left platinum knob, and it has a little spacer, guys. So you want to keep track of all these things in a little container. And then on the right side, you'll have your Flatten set screws. Go ahead and loosen those up enough to pull the rod out. And we'll go ahead and pull the rod out. And then with that, you can pull the platen out. And these platens are usually pretty good. And when you see white platens like that, I actually like it when I see white platens because that's just like fresh powder on a mountain snow. That's like the the sign that this thing is has some life left in it and it just wipes off but it's powder like fresh brand new powder and they they feel good they look bad until you wipe them down but they're soft so powdered white platens generally do do okay they do well we're gonna put that aside with the other junk and we're halfway done guys no, not really um, the paper table comes off with well you know what let's do the let's do the side carriage covers first those are pretty easy uh, this one has a screw right here Come back carriage cap section and then it has one either on the bottom or on the inside oh yeah that's right it's i've done a lot of these royal parades and this one has this little stopper guy for the carriage arm. Can you see that? Stopper guy. That acts as the last piece to hold this carriage cap on. And you have to be careful with these oils because now this thing is gonna start flopping around on you. So what I usually try to do is get a string or an old draw band that I have laying around and I'll stick it through the platen rod hole. Get my head in the way here for a second. Do, 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 do. Stick it through like so. Because there's sometimes a lot of pieces in these, these end caps here for the platen advanced gears and spacers. And they're not, it's not super difficult to, to deal with, but why? I deal with it. I'll just tie them, tie it together. I'll usually use a zip tie if I have a zip tie on my desk. This is the first thing I grabbed, a little string. And now it's not going to fall out of place. So we got that carriage cap off. On this opposite carriage cap, oh, Sprocket's chasing his tail. Dang it. Sprocket, I was going to film you chasing your tail. There's this inner screw for the topmost of this side carriage cap. And then it has one on the back, just like the other side. Oh, grab that spacer. There's spacers for these flat rods. So it has one on the back. Like so. Okay, carriage cap. Got that carriage cap off. This thing is wiggly wobbly. Next thing I would do would be to take off this rear paper table and that's pretty simple too there's two screws and a spring we'll pull that spring first because that spring is what operates this paper bale so we'll go ahead and pop the spring out of the way like so now the paper bale is floppy but it gives us access to this Paper table. I'm gonna have to go get a different screwdriver. 
thinner screwdriver. Make sure we don't strip out this screw head. All right. Okay. Now we can go back to old faithful. I have one of those gunsmithing screwdriver kits that have a thousand and one flathead bits in them. It's got a bunch of different size ranges of flatheads, and this is my tank. I use it to, to break stuff, break, break screws loose, and then I'll go back to my more delicate surgical items. Put that in the paper table slot, and then you can slide the paper table out. And there'll be a spring right here that connects to the paper veil. And on the back, if you're going to paint these, these are kind of difficult to paint because this the way that this paper guide is set in there, it's hammered in. So you have to pull this clip off to get this out of the way. And then you have to slide something flat in there to bend that tab straight back because they, they hammer that in. And that's what locks this from going too far. You can see there's a wider wider area right here on this side. That's so you can bring it all the way over. And once you bring it all the way over, you can slide it out and up. But because it's stopped right there, it won't go into that wider area. Just little things, little things you have to be pre-prepared for. Um, on these machines, the Royal Parades and the, the Signets and the, the Royal Lights, the ones with tabs, they always have tab issues. They're, the racks in the back are very fragile and they're easily knocked out of alignment and they're only held in with two screws on each corner. So you can loosen those up and align them like so. And the bell also has issues. I don't normally con condone using WD-40 for everything, but it's a good quick, quick way to see if things are gonna be broken once you get them cleaned. The bell works now with just a spray of WD-40. And that's usually what I use that for. That's before I go into the mineral spirits and rubbing alcohol and ultrasonic bath and, and all that stuff. I, I try to check out the systems, break them free with the, the WD-40, test them out. And that way I know if I'm getting in deep over my head. You know. So on these Royal Lights, or signets or parades there's two switches on either side the carriage lock and the ribbon set switch on this side and you have to take one or the other off to get the body off because it will hold it to keep it from from tilting in the direction that it needs to go I used to take the ribbon selector side off just because I don't know I thought that might have been the, the best way to go but there's a little tiny ball a ball bearing in here that that acts as the detent and that falls off pretty easily and you got to use bearing grease to hold it back into place when you get these in and it's in a, these these screws are in a weird spot where you actually need a 90 degree screwdriver or use a bit like this that you would find in your in your toolkit with a quarter inch wrench and you slide it in there like so and then you can stick it in there and then you can work in a small small space but we're going to use this 90 i bought this at harbor freight and it, it, the only thing i've ever used it for is the royal parade so two dollars it saved me the headaches so we're going to go to the carriage lock side and there's a spring here too but we'll just go ahead and start by removing this this is probably the most fiddly Part of the, the project because it's such a small small area but once you get that off it's pretty easy ratchet 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 not many typewriters have these these screws like that and so eventually once you get it loosened enough this thing will will allow you to go and, and flip it over all the way to one side. You don't have to take it out all the way, you just gotta move it 
out of the line of the, the carriage. And now it's going to rub on that. So we can go to the bottom. And the bottoms on these are pretty simple. It's just the four screws. And you don't even really have to take them all the way out because they're slotted. So you can loosen these screws up enough. You know, like a picture frame has those, they have the giant holes on them. And then they have the little hole to wedge it in there. So you can kind of, see if we can get this out without, this corner's kind of stuck under there. So we'll help that out. Help that corner out. Slide that out. Let's get a little bit more. One more. One more. A little more. Now I think we can slide this away. Easier said than done. Sometimes it sticks on the feet. You can always just take out the, all the screws. You don't have to do it the, the right way. But if there's one less screw to screw in later, it's better for me. And then that way you kind of know what you'll be getting yourself into. Yeah, it was stuck on the foot. These feet are, they get smashed over time and they kind of wedge in there. Yeah, this is just stuck on the foot. Just stuck on the foot. And see, it has these picture frame style holes so you can just slot it forward and back and lift it up. And that takes the bottom off. And the Royal Lights have well, that's a little thing. That probably would have caused some issues later on. Uh, they 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 consistently have issues with the mark with the ribbon selection up and down. You'll set it to red and you'll get half and half. And I've spent hours and hours and hours messing with the ribbon lifter system. And they even have them marked in red paint. Do not touch this. But the, it's so fragile. This this lifter part right here. That if somebody yanks on it the wrong way when they're changing a ribbon it will bend these forks and these forks are the only thing that stop it from doing its thing and it is a pain in the butt last thing to take off the body i guess you do have to take off these these screws you could take it off right there how am i gonna do it let's just take off the whole no, we're going to take off the screws. Take off these four screws that mount the body to the frame rail. You hear Sprocket over there. The, weather, the weather's changing so I can open the door now. And Sprocket has free reign of the, the yard to go play around and without freezing his feet off in the snow. Let's see that that's clear everything. Okay, so we got those screws out, and then you'll pull the carriage to the, the side that doesn't have the thing. Oh, there's this lever right there. Watch for that. Can we pull this lever off? I don't want to break anything. Oh, there's a screw on it. Can I just get around that screw without going crazy? Maybe that's why I did the carriage for the, the ribbon. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'm just being dumb, guys. Getting ahead of myself, looking for problems that aren't really there. Make sure that's down. And then you slide it over like so. And that takes that off. And now you're free to mess around with all the bits. Make sure the spring isn't catching on. Right. Now you can get in here and, and dial everything in. I do not recommend taking the carriages off these. I've taken the carriage off before, and there's 16 micro ball bearings in this in a carrier system underneath here. Not fun. Very much so not a fun fun job. These are very cheap machines and budget-minded. And they're kind of they're kind of disposable camera of their day. But this one is script. And the person wants it custom painted. And I've done enough of them that I could go through and make sure this one is is nice to use but there are definitely some better machines out there if you're looking for an ultra portable 
with script and the Terras are good, the Olympias are good, but this is pretty cheap. You can find them usually for under $100 in script. And they work, they type. They're just kind of plodding and chunky and the Royal Royalites. So we're gonna take you out of the stand, give you a good rinse over of the, the machine. Here's your paper release that's part of the platinum rod. That's what holds it steady. Here's your tab system. And then when you flip the tabs, it, it just flips these fingers like so. Click, click. And those always get messed up. And the springs fall off and those are a pain to adjust. And sometimes it'll knock two buttons at one time. So that's very easy to adjust either by moving this you can see how wobbly that is or there's screws right here on the inside and that will allow you to slide the tab rack left and right to align it that direction uh, as far as that goes it's a pretty basic system like i said the ribbon lifter is a pain in the butt if, you, if you're getting black and red mixed on the the red setting i would just say screw it go with it put an all black ribbon in and it, I know it's not the, the proper way to do it, but if you start getting in here and bending around on these painted marks, it's just, you're, you're gonna have a bad time doing all these little adjustments. But here's the ribbon lift and that's what stops it. And these little forks get bent really easily. This one stops for the black and then when you switch to red, this one would stop that screw would stop that ribbon lifter from going too far up or down and it's a pain in the butt i'll say it again because i've done like a hundred of these royal lights and i tried to dial them in for people and it's just not worth it you know i know i want you you, you guys want them perfect and, and to get them going but i try my best but these are not very friendly filthy look how filthy this guy is here's your space bar u bar that's what lifts the ribbon so there's adjustments here those two you can adjust it on that little arm that bends you can adjust it through these screws you can adjust it through these so usually when a system has like one two three four five six seven eight eight different adjustment points for one thing there's a it's bound to, to to run into issues over time it's not a solid more chances of error mainspring draw band it's easy to get to through the bottom and that's it guys i'm going to call it here because we're doing 20 minutes on a royal royal lights royal parade royal signets they're royal 64 and spirit 64 they come in all sorts of names. My bell it wasn't working until I hit it with some WD-40 just to see if we were dealing with more issues. Very basic systems. Line lock right here. Line lock issues also can be adjusted out through this collar. When it pushes on that, it'll set it. And there's a collar on this side. And that will adjust how it pulls on that line lock bar. There's just a lot of little things to, to adjust on these machines. So that's it. Here's those tab rack screws right inside there where my fingernails pointing. Right there. And right there. So you crack those loose and then you can move this side to side and align it up with this finger that I've had these springs break and that causes issues. So if you guys have any Royal Light questions other than where to buy your next one, because they are, they're out there. But look for them in script. If it's got a one and it's a Royal Light, Royal Parade, it's a script machine. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. All right, guys, Hot Rod Typewriter Company. Hope you enjoyed this Royal Parade teardown video. 
and we'll show you guys some final final product pictures when I'm when I'm all finished with it. Talk to you guys later.